guys, game time three attempt to send it to overtime just off oh, the mark. Man. It ruined a 30 point night. So he's going to have to wait for a spot yep. on it's your podium. Who did make the medal stand, Nick? <laughs> Kawhi was pacing to make his first time on the podium if he hits this game win or win a game without Paul George. Unfortunately, he didn't. You know who could win a game without his fellow superstar? Kyrie Irving. Kyrie gets a bronze medal, 29-5 and 6, oh, last, 6 and 5 last night, pardon me. And he was, Kyrie, first quarter, 7 of 7, 18 points. Cooled off after that, but Kyrie gets the bronze. Who gets the silver? Another first-time medalist this year. LeBron Raymond James, 26, 11, and 7, and just a virtuoso final two minutes. Hey, who's this fadeaway jump shot remind you of? The second greatest player of all time? Maybe. Hold on, let's do an even harder one to ice the game. Dylan Brooks, you're too small. Right in your eye. And then on the other end of the court. If that's not enough at 36 years old, okay, we'll watch this again. It's so pretty. My goodness. I know MJ had a good fadeaway. I don't think he ever hit one quite that good. Finding a way to top And now LeBron. on the other end of the court, wait. We've got, we, uh, what about some defense? How about some 36-year-old? No, sir, Ooh. no, sir. There's the game. So LeBron gets a silver medalist. <laughs> and then the winner, right now, this moment, if we voted today, he might be league MVP. The Joker, 35, 15, and 6, averaging 26, 12, and 12 on the year. The Joker with his fewest assists of the season, but his most points, a magnificent game. He gets the gold medal, Brandon. But but Nick, look, I've only been on the show for a couple of months, but I was a fan of the show. I used to watch. I think you said last year that this guy wasn't a superstar and he was out of shape. Oh, so no. are you changing your tone yeah. on this guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, I once upon a time right. on the show said I thought he sweated gravy. That's true. I did say that. But what, <laughs> yeah. it, what evidently is true is the Joker's amazing. I was I was underrating him, and he proved it in the postseason. Listen, I can change my Sweating opinion with gravy. brilliant postseason performances. What? Yeah, that's what I said. It was, they had to mop it up. It was ugly. The Wilds, what he did in the postseason, what he's doing this year, he's proven himself as a top ten player in the league. It's true. Oh, Ooh. easily top 10. Ooh. Tenuous grip, tenuous grip on that assist title that I'm rooting for. Here comes Russ. Be very careful. Six assists, not going to get it done. We need more of these like 18 assist games from the Joker. Good. Uh, we take a turn now and head to Miami with two burning questions. One, will my parents ever actually move down there and stop talking about it? And two, is two of the starting quarterback next season? Dolphins GM Chris Greer doesn't know my parents, so he weighed in on the second question. The quarterback situation said it will, in fact, be Tua moving forward. Tua went six and three as the starter in an up and down rookie season. But what about Fitz Magic, Brandon? Your guy. Well, let me ask you: You convinced Tua is the starting quarterback down there in Miami? Well, I'll say this: If they had Fitz Magic, they probably would have won that game, and they probably would have been in the playoffs. But look. Here's oh. the deal with, with Tua. I, 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 look, when, when he passed, when, when his first 15 passes go farther than four yards, then I'll be convinced. If you go back and watch that game and look at his first 20 passes, right. like, what's going on here? Now, look, he has all the intangibles. You talk about leadership. You talk about relatability. You talk about uh, can he throw it, uh, football IQ. He has all of those things. But something interesting is going on in Miami. It's like this Tua Fitzpatrick thing, you know, sitting him, not letting him finish in games and getting those reps. What is going on in Miami where you're like, we got to pull him back? Also, the inconsistencies. You talk about Josh Allen all the time, Nick, and how he's up and down, up and down. But if you look at Tua, some days, some games he'll go for 360 yards. Some games he'll go for 83 yards or 90 or 200. It's like, who yep. are we dealing That's with? That's right. So I'm tough on quarterbacks, Nick, because you're the guy that told me that I actually played with, what, 17, 18 different quarterbacks. So I just need a Correct. little bit more Most time. Of them I'd like the direction they're hitting. By the end of the day, I'm not convinced. Okay, so this is tough for me because I like Tua personally. I think he's an exceptional young man. I really like his family, who I got to know a very little bit at the Super Bowl last year. And I went out there and said Tua, not Justin Herbert, not even Joe Burrow, that it's Tua should have been the number one pick of the draft. But he was not impressive this year. 
And there are two ways to look at it. One way is he wasn't even supposed to play this year. This is supposed to be a red shirt year. Yep. Anything from Tua that was a healthy season was a positive. The other way to look at it is watch all the games the Miami Dolphins played and count how many impressive throws you can find. This one right here against the Chiefs is impressive, kind of. It's a good throw, but it is into triple coverage, almost got picked. Everything else is three yards. Everything else is dink and dunk. So there are real concerns. Now, into his defense, and Brandon, I'm going to tread lightly here because I know this is <laughs> one of your guys. How much of this is Tua and how much of it is Chan Gailey, who they brought in yeah. because of the relationship with Ryan Fitzpatrick and that maybe Chan Gailey had too much of the training wheels on Tua? I don't know. But because, Brandon, there is enough of an unknown, what I wouldn't do if I was Miami is give up on him and spend the third overall pick on the third best quarterback of the draft, whomever you think that is. That, to me, would be a rash decision. So I would not move on from Tua after a mediocre half a season of starting, but I cannot sit here and say I am thoroughly convinced the way I am about Justin Herbert that he is a no doubt can't miss franchise quarterback. He did not give us the evidence of that throughout the season. Yeah, so like just so to respond Brand quickly while it's here, just to respond to his point about Chan Gailey, I think it's more Brian Flores uh, a thing than Coach Chan Gailey. Chan Gailey, I was with Coach Gailey in uh, in New York when I was playing for the Jets. And he's not that type of guy. He just wants you to do your job and go win. I remember when we were installing our offense wilds, Chan Gailey, I would go to him. I'm like, Coach, did you like that route? Did I get my depth? Do you want it like this? Do you want to do it like that? He said, Brandon, let me ask you a question. Did you beat the man? I said, yeah, I beat the man. He said, that's all that matter, Brandon. <laughs> so I don't think it's Chan Gailey. I think it's all Coach Flores uh, uh, making sure that this kid is in the right situation to develop, whether it's right or wrong. He's doing what he thinks is best. Look, so I think the whole thing is a mess. And we knew this was a mess when Tua got the starting job. And we, we Doug Peterson's been taking so much heat for pulling Jalen Hurts out of the game, Nick. But we're, if who gave this year, who gave the Dolphins the best chance to make it to the playoffs? Was it Tua or was it Ryan Fitzpatrick who was on a winning streak? You knew that they made the wrong decision because they weren't even allowing Tua to finish the games. And to say that they're not high on Tua, it, it, it's a little bit like your analogy, like you had a million dollars in the bank and then you had 50,000. But if you have zero, you're looking up at 50. Wow, that's great. But if you had a million, went down to 50. It's a disaster. They were talking about giving him <laughs> Marino's number. Remember that before the draft? Like, hey, should Tua wear Marino's yeah. number? Should we unretire? What should we do? He's our new franchise quarterback. <laughs> now they're not letting him. Yeah. Now they're not letting him finish games. And where there's smoke, there's fire. He's not the best quarterback on the team. Is he the best quarterback in this draft outside of Trevor Lawrence? I guess. But are the Dolphins looking to have a redo? I'm 100% sure. It's like. Any conversation that's happening around Tua is not happening around uh, Justin Herbert. No, none whatsoever. No, it's so not. If you don't have no, a Justin true. Herbert relationship with your QB, then he's not the guy. But it, it, listen, I think after the first year, and it's going to be awkward coming from me on this, I think after the first year, most people would have thought the Bills wanted a do-over on Josh Allen. Another top 10 pick that there were question yeah. marks about. And now, right now, to the vast majority of the football world, that looks like a great pick. My advice for the Dolphins would be punt on this decision. And by that, I mean they have four picks in the top 50. They have three, 18, 36, and 50, if my math is right, on this upcoming draft. Trade, trade that third pick for later in the draft, and a future first rounder. That way, if after year two, Tua hasn't improved, you have the capital you need to next year draft your quarterback. Don't make a hasty decision right now. Continue to parlay with that third overall pick, which could get you a massive uh, haul as far as GM draft picks, Wright. into future picks as insurance, if you would, in case Tua doesn't improve, that would be my advice for them rather than to draft whatever quarterback's third on their board after Lawrence and Fields go one and two.
Yeah, I agree with you uh, on, on that, Nick. I mean, and, and why I say I'm not convinced is not because I don't think he, he, he can't ball. It's because sometimes guys need to develop. Not everyone's going to have a Justin Herbert type of uh, a rookie Correct. year. Like, it's hard. He's when when I record. need my two a time information, I'll go to the Sun Sentinel and I listen to Omar Kelly. Omar Kelly has this kid down, and he talks about two things. He's like, he's a step slow. In his decision making, and his time, and his timing is is a little off. Like he's holding on it just a little, a little long. He needs to see these guys open. Meaning, in college, like these guys are wide open. In the NFL, wide open. a yep. yard, an inch is is wide open. So it's I think the yep. with the proper time and more reps, Tua could turn into something special, Jenna.